Good afternoon. I don't know that. Uh, am I audible or not? Please give me feedback. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. okay, then please turn on your camera that we do the first attendance and then go through the lecture. Okay, nice. You can see Hussein, Reza, Ronak, Kamazaman, Sajid Al Haq, Hala, Adam, Kaya, I feel I cannot see. Roy, I saw once and then vanished. And okay. As mean a well, uh, you may just have about five minutes rest. Is it okay for all of you? Okay, sir. Okay, uh, now you can turn off your uh, webcam that we can have the good connection and go for the job. Uh, okay, what we talk uh, till now, we talk some elementary parts for some initial definition regarding the embedded system. Uh, that part is more important, especially when we going to touch the real hard. But the next part, which is more important, and we can say some uh, important definition of the embedded system, and somehow uh, the ability and the price of them will become clear by today uh, subject first. I mean, the communication, which uh, a method and protocol that we have, uh, will make the price, will make the size, will make the application for the embedded system design. Uh, okay, there is some noise. Uh, anyway, today we will talk regarding the communication in embedded system, and uh, it has two series, series one, A and B, that I will try to finish uh, the communication part today, and uh, because as soon as possible, we should start to work with the Arduino board. Uh, Communication protocol are some set of rules or some set of agreements, we can say, that allows two or more communication systems have the communicate, uh, can communicate with each other uh, via any physical medium. Uh, the rule and uh, revolution. Synchronization between the communication system syntax to be followed and uh, semantics are all defined by the term that we call it protocol. And protocol can be implemented by hardware or by the software or communication between the hardware and software. Mainly today our um, talk is focused on the protocol part or uh, the agreement that we put it in the two systems that they should talk between them. Uh, analog and digital communication also use the various communication protocol. And in, the, in addition, each protocol has its own uh, application area. It means that suppose we cannot say that communication part A is bad or B is good, something like that. All are bad and good or in the other words, the advantage and disadvantage will be clear by using uh, the uh, by using an application that uh, you, as a designer, a designer person, uh, have in your mind. 
mainly if you want to have the classification for the communication protocol. In embedded system, we can have two set of protocol. One is that inter-system protocol, and another one is intra-system uh, protocol, which based on these two protocol, we are going to um, have different types of the uh, application and different type, maybe hardware we need, maybe different uh, coding we need, maybe different sensor or maybe different uh, uh, listener parts you need. You know that communication is something like talking and uh, listening. Exa exactly what uh, we will do now it's uh, based on uh, the some communication part. I can talk and you can suppose here, but the protocol that we put here between us is exactly um, based on the language base, that the language is English medium. Suppose you can talk in your own language, somehow I will understand, somehow I will not understand. Some of our Chinese friends can come and they also can talk, means that they will try to communicate, but if we don't know Chinese, we cannot understand or any other language, okay? Then something that we should remember is that communication is between some person or some system who will talk and some person who will listen, okay? These two you should remember all, uh, uh, for rest of today's uh, lecture. We can see what is inter-system communication protocol. This type of protocol will establish uh, between two communicating devices, for example, between PC and microprocessor kit, developer kit, something like that. In this case, uh, the communication achieved through the interbus system. We have, suppose, Arduino or we have Raspberry Pi, like that, that we can connect to the PC or something connected to that Raspberry Pi. These are the inter-system uh, communication part, which mainly they use the bus, as uh, they say, I mean, bus system. Like this, as I show on the uh, figure here, as you can see. Uh, the communication protocol for Inter-systems and intra-system are different. Inter-system mainly, till today, I mean, up to the level that we need, is uh, based on USB and UART or U USRT. And for the intra part, we are using the I2C, or they call it I2C protocol, SPI protocol, and CAN protocol, okay? I should remember that, uh, we have some uh, different, different, uh, what we can say, different, different uh, different, different uh, um, type of even the communication support. Maybe you somehow can make one communication protocol for your system which is very specific to that, and other cannot touch it. Uh, I don't know, maybe some of you, or this word that I tell you will remind you the MAC system, you know? MAC system protocol and inter uh, in, uh, interactive other system is little bit limited, is that iOS part. But MAC can just connect to the MAC system mainly, and with Android system, they have some problems. Previous time that was like this, but nowadays even they start to open some gates for the Android based system also. But mainly Mac are work based on iOS um, operator and iOS system. That is something that may uh, remind you the different method and even some specific form of communication that some embedded system can have. But the list that I bring for you here, these are the general form of the communication, okay? And uh, maybe the most popular one. But remember that, suppose, 
in embedded system for the high level event pro, uh, controller, they will try to make their own protocol to communicate. Uh, there is some uh, reason for that. Mainly the main reason is regarding the security of the system. And let me ask you uh, one question. Uh, am I audible from a student now? Uh, yes, sir, you are. Yes, sir. Okay. And you tell me that if you want to design the, uh, suppose, your uh, communication protocol part or your uh, communication protocol, which point do you think it's more important for you? Who can ask, ask me? Suppose, let us ask reliability. from most. Yes. And reliability. What please? One person said nice word. Um, understandability and reliability, sir. Those okay, what do you mean problems. by that? Reliability, what do you mean by reliability? Um, it should be able to work um, reliable, reliably, like in any situation. It shouldn't um, have any issues or anything. It should be able to continuously work um, no matter what type of um, information we send. Okay, one, one thing, you um, make me sensitive to one word. Suppose if your mobile phone is crashed one year, one day, suppose you are working with so many apps with your mobile phone and suddenly it's not working. You said that this system is not reliable? <laughs> um, I, no, I can't say that. So. Uh, unfortunately, I'm from the instrumentation part, and all the instrumentation person are very sensitive to some words. One is accuracy, one is reliability, one is repeatability, one is sensitivity. Okay, but don't use these words in the wrong direction. Reliable uh, system uh, is not system who is simply work. Okay, this is wrong as uh, that people will work. Reliable in the application will make sense. Okay, suppose you can have one okay. uh, system which is working, but in the real application it will not show the proper working. Okay, so. but I I understand what you say. You think about sustainability of the system means that. As long as the system is working, you want that your communication is established. Yes? Yes, sir, exactly. That is right. That is why I tell you, you said some nice word between your uh, sentence, Kaya. Yes, what do we want? We want that our system to make the communication protocol. Which point is more important for you? Hello. Uh, Suppose today I will say that you establish your own pro communication protocol. What is most important? Mm. <laughs> uh, in this case, I can uh, like I can say uh, it should be reliable and uh, how to say compatible. Okay. Okay. The compatibility. It should be compatible. And compatible with, with what? With what? Sorry. What is your reference that you say compatibility? Like in any situation, it should not crash something like that. It would be compatible with any. Do you like, think is it possible that the system working all the time? Never. Not possible, but uh, compatible in the sense like it should not crash when I need it. <laughs> then um, crash when you the, means that okay, very good. Means that airplane is not uh, compatible in your idea. 
because when we need it, we can have the crash. Uh, yeah, we can, can have. Say, shall yeah, you we say can. it's not compatible? Can yeah, we say we need, yeah, we can say because when we need something, it's not working, so it's not compatible. Yeah. No, no. We cannot say like that. Nothing in the world working whenever you need it. <laughs> Most of the crash will happen with the situation that is not predictable. Because you are working in a dynamic situation, my friend. Then how do you uh, expect that everything working uh, with the same condition? Uh, that's, that's a point. There is a point. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Anyway, anyway. None of you tell me that if you want to make the communication protocol, first you should know which two systems should communicate. Suppose if I want to talk with my mobile phone and PC, okay, then which protocol I can have? I can have wireless one or I can have with the wire. Yes, if I go through the wireless one, there is some specific protocol. If I go with the with wire one, then the communication protocol will be different. Then first, 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 before reliability, before repeatability, before uh, anything that you wanted to point, first you should know that what is system A, what is system B. Yes or no? Uh, yes, sir. So yes, that means sir. you're so you're talking that we should, uh, the first priority is to how to say it. Uh, uh, the type of know the system. Yeah, yeah. Know the system. Know the system. Understood, sir. That is why, my friend, we have at least five famous type of communication protocol. Because some of them are good for some hardware, some of them are good with another one, some of them are weak even with some, and some of them are strong with another one. Understand? Then, Selecting the inter-system or intra-system protocol are all based on the uh, application, based on the hardware parts that you have and you are going to uh, use in your design. Remember this point that I tell you. Anyway, please look at to this picture. This is exactly what just right now we practice. We can have two modes of communication. One is simplex. Okay? Simplex is like that, is that I just talking and you just receiving. Like suppose uh, lots of our friends and that just right now they are sleeping in the lectures. That is that I just talking and they are enjoying their sleep time. Okay? We can have half, half complex. Means that they are not fully asleep. They are half time asleep. Some, some, some of them will say something and then uh, pretend that they are alive, but this is not the successful type of the communication. Then what is successful type of communication is duplex. It's like that. I will talk, you also will respond. Understand? Then remember these things. Any mode of communication can be, or all type of communication can have these three type of uh, work. One is that the simplex one. Second one is that half duplex and duplex one, which just right now I try to give you one example. And in my point of view, the best method of the class or lectures is based on duplex one. I should talk, you should respond. Uh, let's start from the inter-system communication, which uh, define as uh, USB, UART, and USR. Uh, AR. Uh, if I want to talk regarding all this communication part in embedded, it's actually a big course and maybe more than 10 lectures, I can just talk about them. I try to give um, you some simple and uh, general 
usable idea regarding this. If you want to read more, you can uh, read, I think, uh, later after these uh, lectures. Fine. Thanks, uh, sir, man, I have one question. Yes, please. Uh, uh, the space satellite, they are simple or half duplex? I mean, the communication system? The communication is, if you say from the G GPS system, you will uh, send the acknowledge system to them, and then they will uh, send you back. Then so in this sense, so we can connect somehow. Duplex, right? We can say half duplex. Somehow we can call them half duplex. It's depends yes, on your uh, communication part, for sir. Oh, I see, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Then, uh, first type of the inter system, which is more in demand nowadays, and I can say that was the biggest revolution for communication in embedded system is USB, which uh, we are going to study that. USB is the short form of universal server bus, which is just two wire to communicate. D e plus and D minus, or data plus and data minus. Nice things in USB is that you can add 127 devices uh, to be connected at any given time, and USB just support plug and play functionality. Nice thing with USB is that it has the sub power for 5 volt, and you have plus and minus pair. That is why you can support charge your mobile phone with uh, your USB of your uh, PC. But as you know, the current amount is limited for the USB, and that is why somehow after using our USB part, they will go on uh, and we will damage them. The USB protocol sends and receives the data serially between the host and external preference device through the data signal lines D1, D plus, and D minus. And apart from two data lines, USB has VCC and ground, as I tell you, and you can see two standard form of them. A standard A, which we are using for our, uh, mainly for our PC, and that is a standard A, and mainly for printers, fax, and cameras, or some special uh, instrument and tool we are using uh, standard B type of the USB. Uh, data will be transferred uh, in USB in the form of packets where two devices can communicate each other and data packets compose eight bits or we can say one byte with the LSB means that least significant bit transmitted first. The meaning of LSP, I think we studied more in DSD subject, and there is no need to talk about it. And in USB data is transferred in three speed. One is that high speed one, which is 25 Mbps to 400 Mbps. Full speed one, which is 500 Kbps to 10 Mbps. And slower, which is 30 kbps, bit per second, I mean, 200 kbps. And now, can you tell me what is the recent number of the USB protocol that we are using? Who can tell me? Um, USB 3.3 or 4.0? Oh, okay, nice. Yes, it's USB 3 is the... Uh, I think this is the latest one, and maybe I will put this for your assignment that you tell me that what is USB 3 or what is USB 2, and what should be the speed of them. Okay, I will note down here to add to the PPT also, uh, difference between USB 2 and USB 3. Maybe the good practice for you to study more and more is USB 4. The figure or um, a structure of USB is something like the figure that I bring for you here, which is the wire 
high speed serial bus for data communication. And you can see here that we have the host controller, root hub and hub, which uh, divided by the hub and device. And again, the hub can be device and device like that. It can be the topology or the structure of the USB. And suppose I bring here that USB T2 host can support up to 127. Then what do you think? You think that USB 3, how many it can take? Okay. And we have one word in embedded system that we call it slave and master. Master is the person who will rule the slave. And a slave itself maybe can rule other parts, but rarely we are using like that. Mainly we want to control the slave uh, by the master time. USB transmit data in, as I say, in the packet format, and each packet has a standard format that we will see. And this communication is host initiated one, uh, the USB host uh, contains a host controller and uh, contains the host controller. Uh, which is responsible for controlling the data communication and including establishing the connectivity with the USB slave device, packetizing and formatting the data packet. We'll see more uh, from this uh, USB, uh, which suppose for the USB 2, the typical connection between the USB peripheral device uh, and the uh, privilers are used with the chamber. This is standard used two different types of connectors of the USB cable uh, for connecting the USB privilers device. Suppose in the type A connector is used the upper stream connection, which is connection with host, and type B connector is used for downstream connection, which is connection with the slave device. Both type A and B connectors contain 4P4 communication. As we study, we have the uh, voltage or VCC of the 5 volt, T minus T plus and ground. And USB uses differential signals for data transmission. It's improved the noise immunity and USB interface has the ability can supply power to connecting the device. It can supply up to 500 milliampere at 5 volt. But my advice is that never use this much current through your USB device. And be careful about uh, this current. This USB supports four different types of data that we call it control transfer, bar transfer, uh, isochronous uh, transfer, and intra transfer. And let us see what are the, these different type of transfer form. The control transfer form uh, will be used by the USB system software to query, configure, and issue the commands to the USB device. Bulk transfer one is used for sending the block of data to the device, and bulk transfer supports error checking and correction. Transferring data to the printer is some example for the bulk uh, transfer system. Uh, Isochronous data transfer is used for real time data communication, and in that, uh, data is transmitted as the stream in real time. Isochronous transfer doesn't support error checking and retransmission of data in case of any transmission loss. On a streaming device like audio device and medical equipment for data collection may use of this type of USB. And intro transfer we use uh, for transferring small amount of data 
Intrap transfer uh, mechanism makes use of pooling technique to see whether the USB device has any data to send. About this intrap part, we will talk more in the. Uh, Audio uh, lecture part. As any protocol or any system, we can have some advantage and disadvantage. For USB also, we can have some advantage like it's fast and simple, it's uh, of low cost, plug and play hardware, which is great, I think. But on the other side, it has some disadvantage like it needs the powerful master device. It has some specific drivers are required. Uh, remember, these are some main, main advantage and disadvantage. You may find more, but these are uh, which is mainly uh, introduced by uh, other people. Second, in the system, it's UART and USART communication protocol, which uh, we are interfering with that. In, I can say, after USB, this is the uh, second most popular communication system in embedded systems. Basic of UART is something like that. Uh, you remember, suppose you have some mice or printer, and modem, uh, the one that uh, literally had to be screwed into your computer, those devices were uh, probably using the UART to communicate with your computer. While USB has almost completely replaced these old cable and uh, connector, and I don't know that you remember that previous time that we are using the user uh, communication or no, but uh, in many do-it-yourself electronic projects which connect to, I don't know, DPS, Bluetooth model, RFID cards to your Raspberry Pi, other, uh, others, but still we are using this type of communication. It's very nice. It's like this. You have the 8-bit of data which will go to support some ICs. And then in that you have TX and RX. TX as the transmitter and RX as the receiver. Then if I want to talk from system number one or UART one to so UART two, what should I do? I should connect the TX part to the RX part. And as you will see, based on this route or this path, I can transfer the data to the second UART system. You aren't uh, itself stand as the universal asynchronized receiver and transmitter. We have some word about this asynchronized and synchronized uh, word. Mainly, I think we discuss in DSP subject, which synchronize it. It means that all data will go at the same time. Asynchronized, it's uh, they can come whenever they want, but. Anyway, it should be some clock or some internal timing to seeing the sending data process. Uh, this type of especially communication is not like SPI and I2C that later we will see, but a physical circuit in the microcontroller or a standalone IC they are. And USRT main purpose is to transmit and receive the serial data. One of the best thing about this uh, type of communication is that it's only used two wire. And uh, the principles behind that is that easy to understand, but if you don't have read part of uh, about SPL protocol, uh, that might be the even good things that you again, after I teach you the SPI part, you read this part. Uh, we have one, uh, as we say, word of the UART as the universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter. Uh, and 
As I said, that they are using the two variable of Rx and Tx as the transmitter and receiver. And in this protocol, uh, that you are, we have the transmission data asynchronized. As they say, which is abbreviation of universal synchronized asynchronized receiver transmitter. Okay, this is uh, the uh, different between two types of UART that we have. One is UART, one is that user. Okay, let us see about UART part, is that asynchronized part, which if I want to talk with system number two, I should connect the TX to RX. And if I want to talk from system number two to system number one, I should connect TX to the RX from the second system to the first one. Uh, and uh, only two layers are needed, and based on this configuration, I can talk with them. Your transmission data uh, method is based on asynchronized type, which means that there is no clock signals to synchronize the output of uh, bit from transmitting section to sampling bits of the receiving UART. And instead of clock signal, the transmitting UART at a start and a stop bit. Is that if I don't know uh, the timing between the data to come, I can specify some pin as a start and stop, which always we can check the data which come from between start and stop. It's the data that we need, and uh, we can establish the communication based on uh, this point. These two bits define the beginning and the end of data packet, so the receiving yard know when to start reading these bits and when it should stop it, but when the receiving UART detects the start bit, it should start to read the incoming bits at some specific frequency. This specific frequency, they call it bullet rate, which is the measure of the speed of the data transfer and expressed in BPS, bit per second. Remember that both users must operate at the same overlap, I mean system number one and system number two, when they want to talk with each other, they should have the same speed of receiving and sending data. The bottleneck between the transmitting and receiving user can only differ by about 10% before the timing of the bits gets too far off. Remember that point. Yeah. This is the map for you all. As you will see, I have one stop bit and I have one parry bit and two stop bit. Why do I put like that? Because in the of this stop bit and stop bit, I can tell my system that data is over and I will not sending the data or the next thing which is come is the new data. You will see I have started and then end between the start and end. Seven bit. And then I have some parity bit and then I have two stop bit. Let's go for Europe which both users uh, must also configure to transmit and receive the same data packet structure. Uh, one of which we are using is two, and uh, maximum speed is any speed up to uh, 115200 bar But usually we are using with the bar rate of 9600. You will see this part in audio part. Uh, mainly, you are asynchronized. 
we are using the serial card and maximum masculine slave is one means that mainly they are speak pair to pair like that how it will work is that the uart is going to transmit the data or receives the data from data bus and the data bus is used to data to uart by another device like cpu memory or microcontrollers uh, data is transferred from the data bus to the transmitting user in parallel form. After transmitting user gets the parallel data from data bus, it's at the start bit and some parity bit and the stop bit, which creating the data packet. And next, the data packet is out serially bit by bit at the TXP. See once more. The UART part, which the receiving UART, uh, the data packet by the help of RX, and receiving UART then convert data back into the parallel from the mover uh, from the and removes the start bit, parity bit, and stop bit. Finally, receiving UART transfer the data packets in parallel the data bus or receiving end as you will see here. So for I have eight with data which will send it parallelly here. Then it will transfer to the Rx peaks to the Rx and then in Rx I will receive. Here again I will put it with the parallel format and receive. The UR transmit data is organized into package as we said and each package contains one start bit, five to nine data bits, depending on your, and some parity bit. Once more, we'll see the pattern, same pattern. Let us see each definition of the bits that we have. First is a start bit, uh, which as we know, the UR data transmission is normally held at the high level voltage when it's not transmitting the data. Then, if you want to start to start the transfer of data, transmitting UR pulls the transmission line from high to low for uh, one clock cycle. And when the receiving the UR detects the high to low to low uh, voltage transmission, it's begin reading the bits in the data frame at the frequency of the power drain. Uh, next part uh, is data frame, which in a uh, data frame uh, contains the actual data being transferred. It can be five bits to eight bits long. And if a parity bit is used, if no parity bits is used, uh, the data frame can be nine bits. This parity bit somehow we can use and somehow no. Nowadays, mainly it will not use more. But if we want to have more secure data, we can use this parity bit. Data frame, as this one, is the data which are real things that you want to transfer. And if uh, no parity bit is used, data can be nine bits. Uh, for transmitting. The next bit is parity one here, as you will see, which describes uh, the evidence or oddness of a number. The parity bit is a way for receiving your art to tell if any data has changed during the transmission. A bit can be changed by electromagnet radiation, uh, mismatch, uh, bias rate, or line distance uh, data. Anything which happens to data, it will give alarm, and then the data will not be transferred. After receiving the reward, read uh, the data frame, it con counts the number of bits with the value of one and check. If the total and even or odd number, and if parity bit is zero, means that it's even parity. If it's one, it means that it's odd. Uh, and 
if the parity is one or odd parity, the one bits in the data frame should total to some odd number, like what we have in DST. It will count the odd and even one and zero, and based on that, it can be uh, uh, sure that the data transfer completely. We have one more bit that we call it UART stop bit, which to signal the end of the data packet, the sending UART drives the data transmission line from low voltage to high voltage for at least two bit uh, duration. Uh, let us see some steps for UART transmission. First is that transmitting you to UART uh, receives data in parallel from the data, something like this, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. This is the data which is going to the transmitting part. Then through that, data will come here. And then with the things and RX, you will send them serially. It will receive. Just give me two minutes, I finish this part. And then when you receive the data from that, where the LSV part, it will again rearrange. And then parallelly, it will send it out, something like that. Read the line, and transmit holding register is empty. Write back to the transmitting data uh, register. Some algorithm like this, we can have. Okay. Uh, I will just hold on for uh, 10 minutes between the lecture, and then again we will come back for a uh, lecture. Is there any question? No, sir. Okay, just no, hold sir. on for, uh, what we can say, for 10 minutes, then uh, we will come back. Okay? I will end it now. Okay, sir. Okay, good. Please turn on your camera that we do the attendance and fast we should start. Okay, just so I don't have Kaya and uh, I have Kaya with blue shirt. Yes, okay. Voice and and hat. Where is Roy? Yes, Roy is there. No problem. Uh, well, uh, Let me send this out. Okay. okay, now please turn off your uh, web page, webcam, then we can start and continue. Okay. Can you see my PPT, please, just now? Can you see? Yes, yes sir. Okay, good. Sajid, can you see? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, good. Good, good. And Kaya, okay, huh? Kaya, is it okay or we lost the time? Hurry up. Uh, 
I think Kaya is not in the group. Um, can I start or not? We should start. Uh... Yes, sir. Oh, okay, okay, then I'll say fast. Anyway, what we talked to now, we talked regarding the USB communication, we talked about the serial sending the data means one by one. And uh, in serial one, we talk about UR. But about USART, which is synchronized and asynchronized type of communication, uh, we uh, should uh, continue. I just say USART uh, in, comp uh, in uh, compass the abilities of UR, which enable application of both depending on the application areas. You will see the figure of user here. We have some clock, we have data, and again, uh, uh, some timing methods, which you can have it or you cannot have it. Depends on your application. Uh, let us continue with uh, uh, what I mean. And first, if I want to compare user and UR, means that the main difference or the broadband between them, I can say that user is the universal asynchronous and synchronized receiver transmitter, uh, is a microcontroller preferred that converts incoming and outcoming bytes of data into the serial bits stream. The definition of that is identical to that of UR, but with synchronized added to this term. And surely there are some more meaningful difference. Otherwise, user would just be known as you are. This is some sentence that I put here. Uh, and the first difference between them is that the way in which serial data may be closed. UR generates its data flux uh, internally to the microcontroller and synchronize that clock with the data stream by using the start with transmission. And there is no incoming clock signal that is uh, associated with the data. So in uh, order to uh, properly receive the data stream, the receiver needs to know ahead of time what the baud rate should be. But in user, on the other hand, uh, can be set up to run in the synchronized modes. And in these modes, the sending preflers will generate a clock that the receiving preflers can recover the data stream without knowing the baud rate ahead of uh, the system. Alternatively, the link we use the completely separately line to carry the clock signal and the use of external clocks I allows the data rate of user to be much higher than of the standard you are uh, reaching up to the rates of 4 Mbps. The second major difference is the number of uh, pro, uh, protocol the preflers can support. A word is a simple and only offers a few options from its base format, such as number of stop bits and uh, even or odd priority. A user is more complex and can generate data in a form corresponding to many different standard protocols. Something like that, IRBA, Lean, Smart Card, uh, driver enabled for RS, 485 interface and mode bus, to name a few we can call. A user also has uh, the same um, asynchronous capability, uh, such as UR, that is, the user can generate the same type of the uh, same serial data. And more if you want uh, to say about uh, these. Uh, user and UR, we can say that user and UR proliferants have definitely different capabilities, 
capabilities and can be used in different situations. Uh, then, as a developer, we will find both proliferators uh, on hand, a standard microcontroller. For example, if we have the microcontrollers that has tightening the low power, such as like STM32 family, this STM32 family part have both UART and UART. Uh, and the UART is meant to do all the heavy lifting serial communication during the period of the high energy consumption and the work that we have inside the microcontroller. And when the microcontroller is, is asleep and in a low power mode through the UR proliferance, it can handle the low speed communication by offering and reduce the energy footprint. If I want to make a table and compare these two types of communication together, maybe this table is useful. That UART is requires only data signal with user. Synchronized mode requires the both data and clock together. UART, the data does not have to be transmitted as the fixed rate, but in user, it should be in the fixed rate. In UR, data is normally transmitted one byte at a time, but in user synchronized data is normally transmitted in the form of blocks. In UR, data transfer speed is set around 4800960038400 bpms at the top, but in synchronized mode allows for higher data transmitting layer and uh, if all other factors are held constant, we can have more than this. In UR, limitation of the speeds is around uh, 115200 BPS, but for user, it's 115 kilobits. And the um, main things that we should know here is that UR is the full duplex and user is half duplex, which is the main uh, difference between these two type of uh, these two type of communication. Uh, same as USB, we have some advantage and disadvantage for users. Suppose we have advantage like only uses two wires, no clock signal we have for UR, have the priority to allows for the error checking, which is very good. The structure of the data packets can be changed as long as both sides are set up for it. Well documented and widely used methods, it's very famous. And on the other side, you have some disadvantage, like that the size of the data frame is limited to a maximum of 9 bit, doesn't support multiple slave or multiple master. The download rate must be within 10% of each other. That was for the first part of the lecture. Let's go for the second part of uh, communication part that I will try to finish. I don't know that can we finish all communication part today, but we will try to do. First, let us review one point that NSP and MSP, which we had in the SD part, but again, we will see. When I talk about NSP part, I talk about least significant bit. And when I talk about the MSP part, I mean most significant bit. Suppose for these binary numbers, this last one is, uh, I don't know, can you see this pointer? Can you see? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, sir. Okay, this is the least significant, and this is the most significant bit. Even I shown here for you. It means that it has the least value and it has the most value. Uh, so different between the protocol or communication protocol that we have is that we will send the data from here to end or from here means that MSV part to the end and. Uh, just I wanted to remind you, 
the difference between NSP and MSP. Second thing is that simplex, halfplex, half duplex, and duplex that we talked already regarding that. And one more thing. We say that we have parallel and serial communication, but really, which of them is better? Serial is better or parallel is better? Mainly, parallel is better because the speed is fast and simultaneously so all the data can come. Uh, and uh, suppose the complexity is less, it has the crosstalk through the common layer, a cable layer, and uh, it has the bit rate and the scheme for the scheme, and requires only the latch to copy data to that data by some memory, the type of the memory or latch it means that data is stored and then transferred. But in the serial form, which just now we talk in the user form, all data will go one by one, okay? And uh, most often using the logical level signal, less number of communication wires we need means that for the previous one, you need to send, suppose, eight bit then you need eight wire with the limitation of the wire cable but here you have one wire which you can send all the data through that then less number of microcontrollers or microprocessor pins will be occupied by using this type of communication and uh, much cheaper than parallel is there can operate a faster frequency than parallel one Synchronization difficulties is reduced and less wires to worry about means a loose connection and that we have in the serial communication part. You remember these shapes? That was the method that we send the data, some start and some stop bit, which clarify for us that data is start to send or data ended. Till now, we talk about uh, communication protocol which divided between intra-system and uh, inter-system protocol. From uh, these parts we talk, I mean for the intra part, we can call R2C, SPI and CAN protocol which are mostly um, used in various embedded system parts. Let us see what is synchronized serial communication part. Um, first, we should know that we have some characteristics for the ser synchronized serial. At least one connection for serial data we need. We need a clock connection and shared ground. And common type for them are Serial Prefiller Interface or SPI and Inter Integrated Signal Bus or I2C uh, protocol. The first one is developed by the Freescale and the next one is developed by the NXT or Flips and it's great. Something that I should tell you that the board that we select to study later is all they know we can uh support both of these protocols uh, unfortunately last semester we didn't have time to review these two protocol with the students i wish this semester with you we can cover this part also it's in my plan and then we can study them okay let's go ahead We will start first from I2C or I square C or inter integrated stages. First of all, you should know that this type of protocol is serial communication protocol. Means for communicating, you don't need much more wire. And you can carry or send the data through one wire to the receiver or a listener uh, system. I square C. In short form of inter-integrated circuit, and it's also somehow written IIC, I2C, I 
power by 2c like that which we use the i2c bus with two wire the bus is bidirectional and synchronized to a common clock what does it mean it means that the timing is synchronous and it has the two way okay bidirectional way and Nice thing for this communication protocol is that we have some microcontrollers that they are available in this protocol. Data rate is 100k BPS, that is nice. Uh, the bus consists of two lines, serial clock. I2C protocol consists of some fleets, and which we call it a start uh, condition which we will do with SDA line and SCA line. Then remember, for this protocol, we have two lines of SDA and SCA. Later, I will show you on Arduino the place of these two pins, which is very nicely mounted there, and we can have lots of amazing job with the help of this uh, protocol. Remember that control uh, the clock will held by the uh, master and it's initiated by the master. Something that we should know with this type of protocol is it's based on some addressing packet. Uh, something like the post system that we have, um, there is some specific address for us when they want to send the data to each other, we should know the address of the receiver and then they can send it. Let us see the system. Uh, if I want to tell you about the story of that, we have version number one, which come in 1992, with a standard speed of 100 kb, uh, bits per second, and then the fast one, which is come with 400 k bit per second. Version two come in 1998 with the highest speed of 3.5 megabit per second, and Released in 2000, year uh, 2000, uh, version of 2.1, which has the clock scratch and higher speed timing relaxed, we had with uh, this protocol. The schematic of this uh, protocol is something like that. Suppose this is your I2C bus, you have two wire of SQL and SCL. And all the printer layers can come and connect to that. Just more than your microcontrollers or microprocessor part, you need two resistors. Mainly, suppose for Arduino, we use the 10K resistor or 4.7K uh, resistor. It can be varied between the controllers, but anyway, uh, just these two resistors can do the job. And the main purpose of this protocol is provide the easiness to connect the lots of preferences with microcontrollers. In another the system, our preferences device are connected as memory mapped device to the microcontrollers. I just want to say uh, necessity is two wire. SDA as the short form of serial data line and SCL as a serial clock line which will carry the information between the device and these two active wires are said to be bidirectional remember that this protocol is a master to a slave communication you know this one we call it master and a slave are these parts but all master and a slave will share the data to through the line of stl and scl and based on these data they can de decide and they can uh, control. In order to establish this communication, master device initially sends the target slave addressing along with read-write flag, and the corresponding slave device will move into the action mode, leaving other device in uh, of space. Uh, as I tell you, this protocol is based on two layers of SDA and SCO, and privileges like these can connect to each other. And this is the pull-up resistor that I tell you. Suppose in 
uh, order in order, the pin number five and pin number four are acting as SCL and FPA, which simply with two pull-up resistors, you can connect various things to them. Uh, in this protocol, once the slave device is ready, then the communication starts between the master and slave device, and one bit acknowledgement is replied by the receiver if transmitter transmits one byte or eight bits of data. A stop condition in this protocol will be uh, uh, issued at the end of communication between the device, something like that. First, we make the SDA low, then the device will understand that we want to start. And when we make it high, it means that we are going to end the uh, sending data. But really, the sending data that does that was simple, but we can say something like that. We have send uh, the start bit, send the slave address that we call it ABDR, then send the read, wait for or send an acknowledgement, send receive the data byte, accept send acknowledgement bit A, and send the stop bit. Like this, you can have the frame of the working and between start, chip address, write, acknowledge, you have, again, Register bit, acknowledge, MSP, data, LSP, acknowledge, and stop. Like this, we can send the data. How should be the data transfer? It's something like that, which in sequence of eight bits, the bits are placed on FDA line, starting with the MSP, and the SCL line is then passed uh, high, then low. And remember that chip cannot really drive the line high, and it's simply, let's <laughs> go something like that. If um, the uh, regi register actually pull it high. And for every 8-bit transfer, the device receiving the data sends back and acknowledge bit, so there are actually nine SCL clock points, as I show you here. In the figure to transfer each eight bit bytes of data. If the receiving device sends back a low acknowledge bit, then it has received the data and is ready to accept another byte. If it sends back the high, then it's indicating it cannot accept any further data and the master should terminate the transfer by sending the stop sequence. <laughs> data transfer from master to SLA will happen, means that the master device send the sequence of SADDR, means that slave address device W, and then waits for acknowledge bits or A. When these acknowledge bits will come from the slave, the slave will only generate if the internal address matches the value sent by the master. And if this happens, then the master sends data and waits for acknowledge A from the slave. The master completes the byte transfer by generating the stop bits P or uh, repeated start one. Uh, that was from master to a slave. But on the other side, from the slave also you can touch with the master. Similar process will happen when master reads from the slave by a slave, but in this case, instead of W, R is sent. Okay, read will come. Instead of write, read will come. And after the data is uh, transmitted from the slaves to the master, the master sends the acknowledge A uh, for the uh, slave part. Then if instead the master does not want any more data, 
it was sent a not acknowledged, which indicates to the slave that it should release the boss. Something like that. It said that, do you want any data from the slave? Master said no. Then it will not acknowledge it and nothing will happen. But you said that, do you want any data? Then master say yes, then they will share the data. This uh, let the master send the stop or uh, repeated start signal. This process that we see, they call it acknowledge system. Or somehow uh, people they call it hand shaking data. It's something like that. Uh, you have uh, some meeting and you don't know that person. But you will raise your hand and say that I'm here, I'm here, and that person, if he wants to see you, he say yes. He also will uh, shake his hand for you. Otherwise, he will not do. Uh, this is also one frame. It shows the SDA and SCL. Please remember and uh, see how the transferring data will be stored from here. Uh, from yes, from this part as the start and this part as the start part and between them they can send the data but like this a star address rewrite acknowledge again data acknowledge stop this actually say that i said i started it's something like that i start to send the data data come okay what is the mode read the right okay suppose read then I receive acknowledge. Next data, I receive. Next data, I receive. Like that till the end of transferring data. But how fast this protocol can be? The standard clock for SCL speed for I to C is up to 100 kilohertz. And uh, Philips to define faster FC speed for, suppose for the fast mode of 400 kilohertz and high speed mode, which is 3.4 megahertz. Again, advantage and disadvantage of the system. We have some advantage here, yeah, like use only two wires, supports multiple master and multiple slave. Acknowledge and not acknowledge bits will give the confirmation that each frame is transferred successfully or no. Hardware is less complicated than with your well known and widely used protocol it, it is and it provides the good communication between the onboard device which are accessed infrequently addressing mechanism is master slave communication cost and circuits complexity does not end up on a number of device we have Disadvantage like a slower data transfer rate than SPI. The size of data frame is limited to 8 bit. More complicated hardware needed to implement than SPI. And the biggest disadvantage of this protocol is limited speed, which still they are working. I personally like this protocol because it's great and one of them I can say marvelous communication actually there are some type of uh, or some special type of sensors like temperature sensors and uh, humidity sensor integrated one which they are using this type of protocol and with them you can acquire lots of them at least with order law between 25 to 35 number of that sensors and read them at the time. It's very really great, I think, and nice type of protocol. On the other side, we have one more protocol that they call it SPI or Serial Pre-Filler Interface Communication Protocol. This protocol is also using two wire. And nice thing in that is that uh, Again, you are working based on master and a slave. Uh, two wire we have, but for master and a slave part, but you need two more wire for selecting the slave 
and one for the serial clock. Then totally, this CI protocol will use four wire, as I mentioned here. Mosi as master out, slave in. Mitho as the master in, slave out. SS as the slave slave. SCLK as the serial clock. Uh, but as I2C protocol, this protocol also is based on master and slave, and uh, main difference is number of the wire, and maybe the most different things in this protocol is that the speed of SPI is more. Communication established between the selected slave and the master slave as soon as, soon as appropriate slave devices selected we have in this protocol. Let us see the schematic of this protocol. You will see we have master and two slaves, which they are connected via the MISTO MOSI SS bar. But you see that for the SS bar, you can just use once and you need to add more pin for SS bar. But the pins of SCLK. MISO and MOSI are common between the number of slaves that you can have in this protocol uh, of communication between the embedded system part. Uh, in serial profile interface or SVR, the synchronized communication protocol, we are using the three wire. Pulse one, chip select, and pin device, and hardware on microcontroller we have. It's developed by Motorola. And the broad range of device we have something like most of memories and most of sensors they have are based on SVI. It's great. Um, a little bit coding with that, it's difficult, but with the help of Arduino, they make it very easy. Uh, maybe it can be the good uh, figure. We show you how it, they will communicate between the master. Suppose you have the 8 bit chip register via the MISO and MOSI from both master and slave. You can communicate, and then you have some clock generator which, uh, with the SSR, it will manage the timing between the slaves that uh, you have. For SPI, you can have four modes. One is that uh, setting SPI control that we call SPCR. We have clock priority as the active high and active low, and clock pause with the data shift on rising edge and um, flying edge that uh, we will see later on. And uh, it can be transferring formats of uh, different with the help of MISO, MOSI, SSPAR, SCK uh, uh, pins, as I showed here. In some, uh, SPI is 1.1, uh, 1.5 megahertz bit frequency, which suppose uh, at mega 89S53. It has the microcontroller hardware. It supports many devices. Let me tell you one that uh, mainly most of the microcontrollers program via the SPI protocol, based on via this one, and you can uh, communicate more with this type of communication. Uh, as advantage and disadvantage, we can say that it's faster than a synchronized serial communication. It supports multiple slave con connection, uh, connectivity. It will use the universal accepted protocol and locus. And some disadvantage like that the protocol, uh, for this protocol are like this, it requires the more wire than other communication protocol. Master device should control all slaves and a numerous slave device leads to circuit complexity. That was about the Part, but in all, if I want to give you the difference between the SPI and I2C, I can have this table. 
which in SPR you have three first line like uh, data input line, data output line, and serial clock, SCQ. But in R2C, you just have SPA and as the serial data line and serial clock line, SCN. Higher data rates, you have up to 10 megahertz or more. You can you have I2C, which is support transfer speeds of around 100 kilohertz. Um, in SPI, you have more efficient in point to point, single master and single slave. Um, in I2C, you have more efficient in multi master, multi slave. In SPI, you have less hardware complexity, but in I2C, you have more because it's interfering with the address. I2C is full duplex, but SPI is half duplex, and you should remember that. Okay, uh, that was uh, till uh, the SPI protocol that I teach you. Uh, let me see that if we can continue for the camp. I think if you wait in the class up to suppose little bit more five minutes, we can finish the CAN protocol. Uh, ready to do that? Yes, sir. Okay, good. One more protocol that we have, we call it Control Area Network or CAN, which is the communication protocol. And mainly it's used in the car, it's used in aeroplane, it's space, um, explorer, and car. And this controller area network is one type of serial communication. It's developed by Robert Bosch for intravehicular communication. Mainly for CAN, you use the CAN high and CAN low at H plus and H minus for data transmission, and it's based on message-oriented communication protocol. Uh, before CAN, the system was something like that, suppose in the car. You have air conditioner, power rain, power locks, everything was connected like that. But after CAN, it's managed very nicely like this you have the low speed and high speed part, which easily you can manage them and uh, give, um, give the command to them or acquire the data from them. The solution to this problem uh, was using where the serial bus, and these bots has the fulfilled some special requirements due to its usage in the vehicles. With the use of CAN, some point-to-point -point wiring is replaced by one serial bus, which is connecting all control system, and this accomplished by adding uh, some CAN uh, specific hardware. Look that they using that part or that specific hardware help to develop and having the uh, this type of nice and powerful protocol. Um, by having this hardware, uh, you can run uh, or uh, the protocol for transmitting and receiving where the bus will happen. Let us see the history of the CAN, which started till 1986 until 2016. It's uh, Continue. Uh, we have PreCAN, which is uh, it's started in 1986 by the Bush, and then 1991, CAN2 will come to pictures with 11 bits and 29 bits with the 2.0B. Uh, then in 1993, it's adopted in international standard of ISO. Then ISO become a standard series in 2003. In 2012, very recent, we can say, nine years, eight years, right? We've released the CAN FD and then CAF 
can FD in 2050 become the standardized? Then the physical can layer for data rates up to five megabit per second standards in ISO. And today can protocol protocol is standards in all vehicles like cars, bus, tractors, and if suppose you see that uh, especially for your car, uh, which suppose something happened to your car and the repairman, first we check the ECU section. The ECU section mainly work based on the scan and can give the command and diagnostic the diagnostic your car nowadays. Uh, even for the ships and EV batteries, uh, industrial machineries and more, these are the application. But serial IO can work. It has something like this that can be most controller we have and processor suppose B C D E, which with the help of can be voice controller and share the data through the serial and you can just grab the data or absorb it. The stream network control area network example can be also use the CAN protocol, which CAN bus line usually interacts to the CAN controller between the line and host at the node. It gives the input and gets output between the physical and data links layer at the host node. The CAN controllers has some parts like BIU or bus interface unit, protocol controller, status cam controller register, receiver buffer, and message object. And these units cannot the host nodes through the host interface circuits. Uh, three standard we have in CAD. One is that 33 kilobit per second. 110 kilobit per second font tolerance can and one megabyte per second high speed can. Some basic configuration is something like this that you can use the different can controller and can host or host controller, for example, some numbers that I put here. And through the bus, you can get the, the data. But what are some real world application for can is Controller area network, uh, automotive industry, factory, machine control, medical equipment, mainly they use the CAN and uh, more as you can see. Suppose in the car, you have the issue section which will give you the working performance and message to control each part of your car. Like uh, this figure will show the CAN uh, part which uh, suppose you have the 29 bits identifier here. You have the start frame that we call it SOS, then 29 bits CAN ID. You have one bit that we call it remote transmission request. You have control and then you can send 64 bits C. Till now you could send eight bits, but with the CAN you can send 64 bits. Then you have the CRC to checking the cycling redundancy check, one two bits of acknowledge and seven bits of end of frame or EOF. Uh, you will see same photo but from other uh, drawing that number of bits is more, speed is very fast and number of data that you can send is also it's very fast. But can protocol line pull down to dominate active state zero by the sender to the CAN line uses the current driver between the output pins and CAN line and pull line down to dominate the uh, state logic with that. Uh, this is the process of the CAN protocol. Uh, maybe now we don't have uh, much more time today. I will put these slides. You can read them, uh, the whole process of the CAN. It's not difficult. It's just making high and low of the bits and how this uh, protocol will work. You can read it. Uh, launch 
all other communication part we can have some advantage and disadvantage for the can here i summarize some of them that you can re uh, see we can some advantage of low cost and reliable shows robust performance secured and fast protocol and some disadvantage like automotive or oriented and bit complex really little bit difficult to write in the uh, course with the uh, for the can but now for suppose Arduino they put some mod modules that you can use them can is low cost centralized robust efficient and flexible uh, protocol that people can use it and uh, through all these communication part that we say we can have this review and summary uh, let me tell you yes this is the summary that we have r to c we use just two wire with spr we use four wire with urt we use three wire one is ground which should be common rxp and txp spr we use sclk SCS, MISO, and MOSI. For I2C, we use SDA and SCL. And for I2C, this is half the plate. It has the serial data transmission used for short distance between the boards, module, and free pillars. Use two pins. SPR use four pins. It's full the plate. Serial data transmission. UART is asynchronized serial data transmission between the device that we can use it. UART is simple, not high speed, no clock needed, limited to just one device connected to support some controller like Pi. Uh, I2C is faster and easier to chain many devices. Uh, SPI is faster uh, than three, but uh, for the Pi also, suppose you can use it. Okay, uh, let me give the task number, I think, three to you to complete it. And uh, meanwhile, if you have any question, uh, please tell me. Do you have any question? Any question from a student? No, no, no question, sir. Okay. First is that, what's the difference between USB 2 and USB 3? Okay. Uh, that we talked in the lecture. Second question that I want that you find is that, find and write some embedded system which using uh, the described communication protocol, means that some that I tell you. And where I can find the CAN bus on vehicle? You tell me, supposing your vehicle, where is exactly they established the CAN protocol? Uh, there was one more question that I wanted you to see. Okay, I think it's enough now. Uh, let me share this screen for you. Please turn on your, uh, please turn on your uh, web, uh, webcam also that we can do the attendance and send for school. I shared the task list there also in the AJM group. Task list number three. Okay, let me also show myself to you. Then you also can see me. Okay, Satam is not there. Munshi, Rona, come, come fast, come very fast. Okay. 
Okay, I have done. It's okay. Well, any question? Oh, my photo is not good. Let me take one good photo. Oh. <laughs> any question? <laughs> Any question? Yes or no? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> oh, my photo also should be good. Why are you are laughing? <laughs> okay, Kaya. Let us see. Anyway, uh, still, I think I have very nice photo from Reza from last uh, yeah, semester. That I can share it. Then don't force me to share that photo. Anyway, if you have question, you can send me on private. Please send your task. Soon I will uh, give the marks for the task that we have. If you don't have question, we can stop now. Okay. So my question is: Do you still have that photo with you of mine? Yes. Yes, I have it. So don't worry. <laughs> My and, goodness, in uh, and and in the proper time, I will share it. Then try to study. Um, okay. Any more question? I'm dead. No question. Okay. See you. Take care. Okay.